it's Zach again, and today I'm going to be doing a demo of Logic Pro X. This is a digital audio workstation from Apple, and they've recently um, done efforts to make it more accessible to people who are blind. And the way they can do that is they also make the screen reader that's on the Mac called VoiceOver, and that's what allows me to use my computer. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of a demo today. We're going to make a song, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Alright, so when you first open up Logic Pro, you're at the uh, Create a New Project screen, and you can choose different templates and things like that, but I'm just going to make a new project. So I'm just going to hit the return key. Untitled, Tracks, Window, Interact with Dialog, New Track, Software Instrument in MIDI, Selected radio button. All right, so now we're in the new track dialog. And this is where you're going to be able to make tracks for your song. So you've got software instruments. Audio, microphone, and line in radio button. You've got audio, so if you have a microphone. Audio, guitar and bass, radio button. You've got guitar and bass. Drummer, radio button. Now drummer, that's a really cool feature that'll come to you in a second. Show details, collapsed, disclosure triangle. And show details is basically settings for the current track type. So like for audio, for example, you could choose um, what input you want on your audio interface, things like that. But I'm going to make a software instrument, so I'm just going to hit return again. Library, browser. All right, so now it opened up the library. And in the library, you can choose different sounds and you have different categories. So if I Tool library. Go into the library here with voiceover. Vintage electric piano. So um, by default, it has an electric piano selected, but if I go down here. Drum kit. Bass. So we've got bass. Drum kit. We've got drum kits. Drum machine. Drum machines. Guitar. We've got guitar. Orchestral. Orchestral sounds. Piano. We've got pianos. Synthesizer. Synthesizer. Vintage B3 organ. And then we have organs. Vintage clop. Uh, some clubs. Vintage electric piano. Electric piano. Arpeggiator. And arpeggiators. So, let's try out a couple of these sounds and find something that we like. So, let's go to uh, piano, I guess. Vint, vint, set the piano. So I'm just gonna go into that. Grand piano and pad. Dimmed. Grand piano and pad. Yeah, that doesn't really sound like what I want, so I'm gonna go down. Grand piano and strings. We keep going. Steinway Grand Piano. That's what dimmed. I want. Steinway Grand Piano. So it's just a regular old grand piano. So let's see how that sounds. Alright, so. Yep, we've got the piano, so I'll just play something here. Me now, but we should probably adjust the tempo first. So I'm going to stop interact. Get out of the library here. Control bar, toolbar. And I'm going to go over here. Interact with it. Mix editors. Rewind. But flip. Record. Control to bar. To where we group. adjust the tempo. Interact with control bar. Group. One but 120. Tempo slider. Here we go. So interact. Just take this up and down. With slip. And I'm going to turn the click on by hitting the K key. And that's a logic shortcut. And it's very useful as well. So I'm going to hit the space bar and let's see what the tempo is at right now. All right, that's a little bit fast. So I'm going to go back to the beginning by hitting return. One bar, one beat, one division, one tick. And you'll hear that voiceover actually told me where I am in the song. That's one of the accessibility features that Apple has implemented. Um, as you fast forward and rewind using the logic fast forward and rewind keys, voiceover will actually tell you where you are in the song, because Logic sends information to voiceover so that it knows that information, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to slow the tempo down a little bit. 110. We'll take it to like 190. 90. Let's see how that is. Cool. I like that. So one bar one. I'm going to go back to the beginning. Stop. And we're going to record something. 
before I do that, I'm going to set my count in. So I'm going to go to the record menu in the menu bar. Menu bar, Apple. Etch, net, record, net, record. There we go. Record, menu. So I'm going to go down. Count in, submenu. And that's exactly what I want. We want count in. So I'm going to go into that. Count in, submenu, none. Now, by default, I think. Check mark, one bar. Yeah, we have a one bar counted, but I want. Two bars. A two bar counted. Two bars, checked. All right. So we're ready to start recording, and to do that, I'll just hit the R key, and then I'll go over to my keyboard and play something. Let's see how this goes. Minus one bar. Just hit the space bar to stop that. So it's a little song. I just was playing some chords. And let's see what we can do with that. So I'm going to listen back to it. What? A little bit of it. Now you'll notice that it actually didn't capture the entire thing. Um, at the beginning, anyway. What? It didn't actually capture the first note. If you listen, I hit one and let's see what did I hit here that's what I hit right there an A flat so that's fine um, it's not a huge deal I just played a little bit before the recording actually started so that's why it did that um, not a big deal though because it still sounds okay so I'm not gonna worry about that so let's see if we can add Let's see if we can add some drones with that. So I'm gonna use that feature I was telling you about before called Drummer. And what this basically is, for those who don't know, is it's basically a virtual drummer um, for your song. So what it will do is you basically set up what are called drummer regions, and then they will play back um, a group of patterns and you can control how complex patterns are, and you can also control um, what instruments are being played. So if you don't like the hi-hats, you can take those out and replace those with, say, cymbals, or you can add like a shaker, for example, or some other kind of percussion, which is really cool. So I'm going to make another new track by hitting Command, Option, and N. New tracks, interact with them. And that's another logic shortcut. So I'm going to go to the right here. Audio. Microphone and line in. Re and that's not what we want. Audio, guitar and bass, radio. We don't want that either. We want drummer, radio button. Drummer, all right. Press drummer. So that's selected now, so I'm going to hit return. Logic, auto play drummer, groove. All right. So by default, it gives us eight bars, or actually, sorry, 16 bars of playing. 
And the default drummer is named Kyle. And uh, let's see what he sounds like with this piano, sh uh, piano track here. So I'm going to stop there. You'll notice that he played for 16 bars and then it just stopped. And that's only because we don't have um, some more regions to fill that drummer track. So what I'm going to do is before I do anything in the drummer editor, which just popped up, I'm going to go tracks group. to the tracks area here. Interact with and in there, tra tracks header group. I'm going to go over here to the tracks the track headers Interact and I'm going to make sure Track one, track two, SoCal group. That that drummer track is selected. And the reason it's called SoCal is that's the name of the kit that he used. Stop interacting with track. So I'm going to go to the right now to where all of the regions are. Tracks contents group. Interact with the contents, as voiceover says. And I'm going to go to the right. SoCal track background. That's what I want. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to interact with that. Interact with SoCal track background. Two items, drummer, region. Now we have these regions, but they're both named a drummer. So how do I tell necessarily which one is which? Well, I have, well, VoiceOver has a feature called uh, help tags. And Logic has implemented this so that when you're on a region and um, you hit the VoiceOver keys to get the help tag, uh, VoiceOver will actually tell you where the region starts and where the region ends. So I'm going to go to the first region here. Drummer, drummer, region. And I'm going to hit the voiceover key to tell me what the help tag is, and this is what it says. Region starts at one bar, one beat, one division, one tick, and ends at nine bars, one beat, one division, one tick. So drummer basically, region. A realistic drum performance that you can edit using important settings in the drummer editor. Control, click, and convert to a MIDI region to edit in the piano roll editor. Yep, so it says that too. Um, so basically it's telling me that this region starts at one bar and is at nine bars. So I know that's not the one that I want to edit. What I want to do is go to the next one. Drummer region. And let's just verify that. Region starts at nine bars, one beat, one division, one tick, and then at 17 bars, one beat, one division, one tick. All right, and that's all I need to do. So I'm going to copy this region by hitting Command C. And what I'm going to do now is go to where this region ends. One bar, seventeen bars, one beat. And I'm using the period and the comma keys to rewind and fast forward. Those are logic shortcuts as well, so you can use them even when voiceover isn't on. So I'm going to paste this, and hopefully it'll paste. Twenty-five bars. Good, it did. All right. So now it ends at twenty-five. Well, we have another region that starts at 17 bars and ends at 25 bars. So let's play this track and see if there's any more that we need to fill in. 24 bars. Yes, there is. So 25 bars, one. I'm going to go back to 25 bars and I'm going to paste this again since the region is still in the clipboard. 33 bars, one beat, one. I'm going to go and listen to that now. 30. Yep, and there's a little more here. 33 bars, one. So I'm going to paste it again. 41 bars, one beat, one. I'm 